What's up guys, it's your boy Rich here. So who does it better, made in Germany or made in America? Huh, so let's go take a look at the made in Germany Torby Lawless versus the made in America Geno Ocean Rover. Let's go. And here they are, Geno's Ocean Rover and Torby's Lawless. Two great dive watches in similar sizes and price points, but so very different. They're both in 40 millimeters, but Torby's Lawless is 11.8 millimeters tall, while Geno's Ocean Rover is 13 and a half millimeters tall. But that's mainly because of the domed sapphire crystal and bubble case back of Geno's Ocean Rover versus the flat sapphire crystal and flat case back of Torby's Lawless. And that difference of 1.7 millimeters in thickness is not noticeable on the wrist. The price of Geno's Ocean Rover is approximately $1,400, while the price of Torby's Lawless is approximately $1,600. But before we get on with the direct comparison between these two watches, it is important to note that the way that we can obtain these watches or order these watches are very different. With Geno, we can go on their website anytime and order one of their watches. That is not the case with Torby because their watches are custom made or made to order. And what that means is they do not stock these watches or have an inventory of them where we can add them to our shopping cart anytime. So we would order a Torby to our preference. So for example, while my preference is to have polished center links, if you prefer a brushed finishing, you can order one that way. And if we're thinking that, uh oh, because these watches are custom made, I won't be able to return it if I don't like it for whatever reason, we would be wrong because we can return a Torby and not pay a restocking fee. The only fee we would have to pay is to ship it back, and that's fair. And to put that into perspective, in the nearly 13 years of Torby's existence, they've only had two returns. Before I talk about the dial of the Ocean Rover, I want to get the homage element to the Rolex Submariner out of the way. So for any of us who initially bought the Geno Ocean Rover, because I think it's fair to say that it is widely considered a top homage to the Rolex Submariner, I think that comparison quickly disappears and we start to appreciate the Geno's Ocean Rover for what it is, a really well-made dive watch. For me, I don't think this resembles the current Rolex Submariner model at all. It doesn't have a Cyclops lens. The seconds hand is different. The hour hand is different. Uh, it doesn't have Geno stamped throughout the chapter ring the way that Rolex does. Instead, uh, this might be considered a mix and match of different Submariners through different eras. So I think it is really fair to say, at least in my experience, that while this might have, through all the hype, reminded me of the Rolex Submariner, I, I don't... I, that quickly disappeared. I don't see the Rolex Submariner anymore when I'm appreciating the G Ocean Rover. So let's talk about this style, which is done in a really nice lacquered finishing, applied indices. It has a uh, great turn action on the bezel, and let's hear it in action. It sounds great. There's very little play, but we're going to have to have some play with any bezel if we want to hear that clicking action. My model has the ceramic bezel insert. Now if we compare that with Torby's Lawless, I think this is where uh, we get its first decisive win. Well, I should have said spoiler alert. But uh, this dial, you see this bleed action sort of where it's bleeding through and that's because this dial is made of copper. So that copper is soaking through uh, the blue dial, giving it that really cool stained look, that burnished look. Uh, the indices or markers are not just applied, they're hand applied and they have feet on the bottom and they are inserted from the underside of the dial and then glued on. So these markers will never fall off. That is a lot of painstaking detail. As far as the bezel comparison or the turn action, uh, here we go. To me, the audible sound is very similar uh, in loudness to the Ocean Rover, but this just clicks and turns so much smoother, just a better tactile sensation uh, that we get in, uh, with our fingers as we turn this. Um, this bezel insert is made of sapphire versus ceramic or steel, and I think that makes it sort of future-proof because uh, you know ceramic has long been considered an upgrade as a bezel insert, and I see a few more watches starting to use sapphire but it's not fully there yet so 
uh, I think this is going to be the next, I guess, evolution of a luxurious material used as a bezel insert. And because it is sapphire, we, we can see these glints of blue, these different nuances of blue that's caused by the genuine sapphire on the bezel insert. A, a really cool effect. And as far as the bezel, we can see that it is actually screwed on uh, to the case, the bezel. See these screws there? Which uh, not a lot of watches do. It's a newer system. I believe Zinn and Breitling uses uh, the screwed screwed on bezel, which makes it easier to service and just another nice level of detail. So as far as the dial and the bezel action and the turn action and the materials used and the quality of the way that this bezel is constructed onto the case, Torby gets the win. Now let's talk about their bracelets. Genoa did a really outstanding job with their glide lock bracelet here uh, where we can adjust it very easily right here. Uh, but we can also see how well done this bracelet is. And it is really simple and just, just a breeze uh, to adjust. And it is really comfortable on the wrist. But I would point out that it is absent of the Genoa branding on here. Well, is that a negative or a flaw? That might be considered a personal preference, but my preference would be to have some sort of branding on the clasp. Now, if we compare that with the bracelet of Torby's, uh, it is branded right there and with their logo there. That is my preference. And when we open it, it also has, it doesn't have the glide lock system, but it does have a, an extension right here. So as far as comfort factor, in my opinion, but they are both really comfortable. I don't think there is an easy decision or an easy call between which wears more comfortably as far as what is more convenient to adjust between the two bracelets. Again, I don't think there is a decisive um, winner here. They are both very simple to adjust, really easy, just very comfortable. Uh, again, I can't say that the branding is you know anything but more than, than a preference. So there is not a decisive winner when it comes to the bracelet. As far as the finishing, I don't think there's a decisive winner on the brushed finishing, but on the polished finishing, I think there is a clearly a decisive winner. And I think that falls in favor of Torby. I think Torby just did a much nicer job, a much deeper job with the polished finishing where it creates that really nice, highly reflective mirror-like finishing. So as far as the Polished finishing goes, advantage, Torby. So what about the movements between these two watches? Well, this is where there is some controversy with the movement that Genoa uses, which is basically considered a clone of the Eta 2824, which is what Torby uses. So it is kind of hard to gauge the movement and how much of this movement is made in-house the way that Genoa claims. As far as accuracy goes, they provide this six week uh, test uh, results here. As, as far as my experience, I've been getting plus seven seconds a day consistently with my Ocean Rover. So for me, it is fine. As far as the Torby, Torby uses the 2824, but they also regulate it in five positions. As far as accuracy goes, I've been getting consistently plus four seconds a day. So the difference between four seconds a day and seven seconds a day, well, I guess that does add up, but I guess the important point is that there isn't really any accuracy issues, at least in my experience, with the movement that Geno uses. The watchmaker that I brought my Geno to said that his experience with the movement is not a bad movement. He wouldn't describe it as being the exact movement as at a 2824, but not a horrible movement. I didn't get a chance to spend as much time with him as I would have liked because there were other customers there, but that was his opinion. So if we are going by the letter of the law, as far as uh, accuracy goes, well, plus four seconds a day trumps plus seven seconds a day. So the winner would have to go to Torby again. So what about the loom? Well, as you can see here, it is much more attractive on the Torby Lawless, including the Torby having a loomed bezel insert. And Genome makes a lot of claims, and one of them is having uh, their gold sand loom, having a strong burst, and then starting to slowly taper off after 15 minutes. Well, that is actually a true claim. Both of the looms have been going strongly after a half hour. So, And then they started to dim off about 35 to 40 minutes in, but there is no clear winner here. This one is a draw.
I want to point out the case back on each of these watches. The Ocean Rover has a very sterile, plain, solid case back, whereas Torby has a very nicely decorated uh, case back here. It is really a, a work of art that, that Torby uses for, uh, on the case back, taking up the entire case back. It is just really well done, very, very tastefully done. Uh, I don't know if that I could uh, categorize this as, as a winner or advantage to because again that is a preference but I think it's fair to say that uh, for most of us if we were to choose between a sterile solid case back without anything on it versus artwork like this I, I think most of us would choose artwork like this so in that case I might have to point another advantage to Torby and finally, there is one last category that I wanted to compare the two brands with, and that's a very underrated and not talked about enough customer service because customer service is hugely important in everything we do. And I've, I've heard the stories, uh, customer service stories from Janelle, meaning their responses are not quick and the questions that are asked are not answered in full. And it should be noted that I was gifted the Ocean Rover by Janelle, but I will agree that their customer service may not be the quickest at responding, nor do they answer all of the questions that we ask them. Versus Torby, where Torby's customer service is just fantastic. They are on point. And not only do they respond promptly, but they answer all of our questions and in great detail. So, for example, learning about the copper dial or the feet on the bottom of the markers or the regulating of the movement or how the, the bezel is actually screwed down all came from Torby, they are they are fantastic and very proud to let us know about these features. And great customer service is just really satisfying. And I really enjoy knowing that whatever questions I have for Torby, that they are going to be uh, very responsive. And I I was not gifted this watch. I actually had to buy this watch. So still, their customer service is really spot on. And uh, I can't rave enough about their customer service. So anything that we want to know or learn. Torby is there for us, and I really appreciate their customer service. So, Torby for the win in the customer service category. As far as presentation goes, here is the box that the Ocean Rover comes in. And it comes with a tool to change the bracelet. This is a leatherette versus Torby's uh, genuine leather case. It looks like it's a cigar carrying case, but it there is how the watch comes in. And this is some extremely rich smelling leather. So, you know, aside from being leather versus leatherette, I just think that the Torby's uh, case is much more practical. So again, in this category, advantage Torby. So the Torby Lawless wins by unanimous decision, but is the price difference of $1,600 versus $1,400 worth it? Because $200 is a lot of money after all. And in my opinion, the answer is yes. We are getting a lot of watch with a lot of painstaking details, a watch that is completely handmade and hand assembled in Germany. And one of the self tests that I came up with when I started to wear the Ocean Rover was would I wear it in a room full of people wearing a Rolex Submariner? And at first my answer was no, just because I didn't want to deal with any of the snarky looks or comments. So those are not likely to happen. But if they were, I just didn't want to deal with it. But the more I started to wear and appreciate Geno's Ocean Rover, my answer changed to yes, I would, because I just don't care. This is more than just an homage. This is more than just cosmetic. This is a very well-made watch. And if we're looking uh, for a watch between these two that is a little splashier, one that uh, might be a little bit more eye-catching, then I think that falls in favor of Geno's Ocean Rover because this is a really striking-looking watch. And I might say that, you know, the Torby Lawless might be considered a watch that is on the simpler side in terms of looks. It is certainly not a splashy-looking watch. But if we want a watch that is not so splashy-looking but where we know how, just how well-made this watch is, constructed, crafted, and the luxurious materials that are used, then I think the Torby is a watch for us. And I find myself wearing the Torby Lawless a lot more. It is just really comfortable and I enjoy knowing just how well made this watch really is. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you the next time. So the Sea Rover, so the Ocean ro the Ocean Rover. So the Made in Germany, 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 the, the Made in Germany, Torby Law.
So the case back on the artwork, no, the, the, the artwork on the case back. Yeah, that's it. The artwork on the case back.